Hello, noble ones. Welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking, and I don't know what to tell you. It's Truth Week. <laughs> it's also DNA Week, apparently. Do you remember when the other day I made this video, New Incredible DNA Study Unfolds the Truth, Real Carthaginian, what the heck did I title it? Ancestry? Well, we've got another one, and this time, instead of being Brown Universities from U Chicago Medicine, and it's called Ancient DNA from Sardinia reveals changing genetic connectivity across the Mediterranean over 6,000 years. All right, so if you got excited about figuring out the real, true, none of the nonsense, the actual real ancestry of Carthaginian, Punics, and that area of the world, and then if you remember, well, I'll leave a link in the description, but we found out that they were, in fact, European in origin. They were of Sicilian and origins, possibly Greek. We'll check this one out. First and foremost, on this article, we are greeted with this beautiful image. This is a, a Bronze Age stone tower. Well, let me read. The Sorcu Etueri Nuragi, one of many distinctive Sardinian Bronze Age stone towers dating to the mid to the late second millennium BC, at a site included in the study. Give credit where credit is due. Uh, Grotte Oliastra, Gruppo Grotte Oliastra. Also credit for using BC, thank you very much. <laughs> I thank you. Today, on the 3rd of July, 2025, year of our Lord. Amen. Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Okay, before we continue reading, I do want to underline, we are looking at 6,000 years of history of, in fact, specifically genetic history of the original Sardinians. Who are the original Sardinians? The real first people in the island. And one thing that we can say about this, just right off the bat, is the fact that already, as far as I remember, the oldest known human remains in Sardinia date back to 20,000 years ago. Uh, however, the majority of the archaeological evidence suggests that Sardinia was mostly empty, at least scarcely populated all the way up to the Mesolithic period, and it is in fact in the Neolithic period that we have new migratory patterns and the arrival of new populations. So that's the people we're going to learn together with the original people in the Mesolithic period. So this is, we are going all the way back to the original Stone Age inhabitants of Sardinia. So let's read. A new study of the genetic history of Sardinia, Mediterranean island off the western coast of Italy. would like to underline the second biggest. The biggest one is Sicily. Still, Sardinia is a freaking gem. I'll show you some pictures later. Tells how genetic ancestry on the island was relatively stable through the end of the Bronze Age, even as mainland Europe saw new ancestries arrive. And that makes sense because it's an island. The study further details how the island's genetics ancestry became more diverse and interconnected with the Mediterranean starting in the Iron Age as Phoenician, Punic and eventually Roman people began arriving to the island. And all of this, you know, just makes perfect sense if you think about it. So the island was quite isolated in the Stone Age all the way up to the Bronze Age, although we have a migrant mostly empty throughout the Stone Age, Mesolithic period, scarce population patches. Then in the Neolithic it gets filled in and it remains stable all the way up to the Bronze Age and then in the Iron Age we have an arrival of Phoenicians, Carthaginians and Romans. So far so good. The research published in Nature Communications analyzed genome-wide DNA data for seven individuals from more than 20 Sardinian archaeological sites spanning roughly 6,000 years from the Middle Neolithic through the medieval period. No previous study has used genome-wide DNA extracted from ancient remains to look at the population history of Sardinia. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, everything that I had studied up to this point when it comes to Sardinia had to do with either archaeology or history rather than genetics. So this is going to be great. Open quotes. Geneticists have been studying the people of Sardinia for a long time, but we haven't known much about their past. Close quotes, said the senior author John November, PhD, a leading computational biologist at the University of Chicago who studies genetic diversity in natural populations. Open quotes. There have been clues that Sardinia had a particularly interesting genetic history, and understanding this history could have relevance to larger questions about the peopling of the Mediterranean. Close quotes. And already, so basically, this is a great continuation of the previous study that we have reviewed together, link in the description. All right, let's have a look at this. Periods of stability and change. Sampling DNA from ancient remains allows scientists to get a snapshot of people living at a specific time and place, instead of using modern DNA and inferring the past based on assumptions and mathematical models. Absolutely. 
when the team compared the DNA of 70 ancient individuals collected from Sardinia to the DNA of other ancient and modern individuals, they uncovered two major patterns. Here is where it's going to get very interesting, man, I love finding out the truth. All right, here's the kicker. Who are they related to, the original Sardinians? First, they saw that Sardinian individuals in the Middle Neolithic period, from 4100 to 3500 BC, were closely related to people from mainland Europe of the time. Period. So, if you're Sardinian and you want to know, are we connected to these people? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Genetic ancestry then remained relatively stable on the island through at least the end of the Nuragic period, so 900 BC. And you lost me there with the BC. Come on, man. Come on. Now this is going to be harder to rewrite, is it? For the people who love swapping things and changing things around without following evidence. Good luck with that now. This pattern differs from other regions of mainland Europe, which experienced new ancestries entering from people moving across the continent in the Bronze Age. Absolutely, once again, it's an island that makes sense. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Iceland. The results also show the development of Sardinia's distinctive Nuraga stone towers and culture, after which the Nuragic period is named, did not coincide with any detectable new genetic ancestry arriving to the island. So basically, they maintain genetic continuity. I mean, it makes sense. I think even today there is a certain level of relatedness between villages and towns. Open quotes. We found striking stability in ancestry from the Middle Neolithic to the end of the Nuragic period in Sardinia. Close quote, say Joe Marcus, a PhD student in the Department of Human Genetics at U Chicago and a co-first author of the paper. This is fascinating. Team found evidence of the arrival of different populations across the Mediterranean. First, with Phoenicians originating from the Levant, and this is interesting because even Carthage started, Carthage actually started with Phoenicians, and then the study told us that eventually that genetic contribution pretty much evaporated with centuries, and, and basically what the actual Carthaginians were genetically, they were connected to Sicilians and people from Aegean, Greeks among others. Here we see that the original inhabitants were actually connected in Sardinia, were connected to mainland Europe, makes sense, and Punics, of course, that's the Carthaginians, whose culture centered in Carthage, modern-day Tunisia. And even though it's in modern-day Tunisia, we figured out, we found out in the recent study that I shared on this channel that they weren't African in the sense that from the African continent, but they were connected to Sicilians and Greeks. Their new ancestry continued to appear during the Roman period and further in the medieval period as Sardinia became more historically influenced by migration of people from modern-day Italy and Spain. Okay, so I think this already kind of paints a very complete picture. We're going to continue reading, but... Yeah, the fact that they say mainland Europe, I wish that they would be a bit more specific. I'm going to see if the study actually mentions that, because now I'm curious, mainland Europe, where? Open quotes, we observed clear signals of dynamic periods of contact linking the island to the rest of the Mediterranean, appearing first in individuals from the two Phoenician and Punic sites as early as 500 BC, and then in individuals from the Roman and medieval periods, close quote, said Harold Ringbauer, PhD, a postdoctoral researcher involved in the computational data analysis at U Chicago and a co-first author of the paper. The group results help explain the similarities with DNA from mainland Europeans, individuals of the Neolithic and Copper Age, such as, there we go, the Otzi the Iceman. Right, so that's like the natural mummy, right? The uh, ice guy, let me see. So basically will be this guy. This is a body that was found, I think, in between Northern Italy and Austria, although genetically is related to like Southern Europeans, Corsicans and Sardinians. What's interesting about this guy is that most likely he was a copper smelter. So someone who worked with copper because there was a lot of copper found in his hair and body. He like ate two hours before dying. So it's possible that it was some kind of ritual, sacrifice and whatnot. And another thing, particular about this guy is that he had something like 60 or 61 tattoos very, very interesting very interesting figure okay so related to these people fantastic and there we go here we read an almost perfectly preserved 5300 year old human discovered in the alpine ice in northern italy in 1991 specifically among modern europeans also its dna is most similar to modern day sardinians boom Boom. So even modern day Sardinians, guys, this is huge. Sardinians have been pretty much the same, <laughs> like since the freaking Neolithic. That's insane. With 
inclusions of Punic, Phoenician, and Roman, of course, but this is massive. The new study supports the theory that this similarity remains because Sardinia had less turnover of genetic ancestry over time than mainland Europe, which experienced large-scale migration in the Bronze Age and once again makes perfect sense. If you're enjoying this video so far, please take a moment to check out my Patreon page. With as little as a $5 support, you can help us ensure that we can continue to produce high-quality and high-researched content, and at the same time you get access to polls, extra videos, unlisted streams, and much more. Thank you so much. Besides proving new insight into mysteries of the past, studying ancient DNA also has implications for well-being of present-day humans. This model of Sardinia's population history establishment, followed by relative isolation and then the arrival of new sources of diversity, provides a new framework for understanding how genetic variants with health implications became more frequent on the island. I mean, health, I can understand because freaking Sardinians never die. Like, literally, they have one of the highest number of over-centenaries, like people that li live over 100 year years of age, and not to mention they have, like, a very low numbers of all sorts of diseases. People in Sardinia are very healthy, on average. So, sure, yes, study away. In fact, open quotes from future studies, we want to look more closely at mutations that we think are involved in disease to see in which period they changed in frequency and how quickly they changed. Close quote, November said, open quotes, that will help us understand the processing acting of these diseases and in turn gain a richer view that may yield insight for human health. Close quotes. Absolutely. So, this is pretty much what we could read in this very well written article from the U Chicago Medicine University, I guess, Department of Biology, Biological Sciences. But here is the actual study, genetic history from the Middle Neolithic to present of the Mediterranean island of Sardinia. I'll put a link in the description if you want to actually read all of the details about this. But for those who won't, this is pretty much the massive summary. DNA in Sardinia has been almost the same for the last 6,000 years. 6,000 years, at least. But of course, it does go into the details of signatures of admixture when it comes to those, like for instance, in the medieval period and then the, uh, so the entrance of all, several people from Italy and Spain and all of that. So, of course, which reflects the linguistic aspect of it, because the thing is that Sardinia is a fascinating island, and now even more so with these genetic studies, but in general, even linguistic and culturally, Sardinia is, first of all, it's absolutely gorgeous, and I'll show you some pictures like I promised, but linguistically Sardinian, specifically the northern Sardinia, Sardinia regional variety of the dialects, or regional languages, we should say, uh, spoken in the north is, in fact, the most conservative Romance language and the closest to Latin. So, at least when it comes to pronunciation and certain structure and sentence patterns, more closely related to Latin than Italian. And uh, they even maintain some classical Latin pronunciation when it comes to vowel, uh, sorry, consonant clusters, and uh, in general consonants, and it's absolutely fascinating. But Sardinians are great. I always had a great time whenever I met Sardinians. Uh, I love their accent. It's very fun. And you really have it all. You've got absolutely gorgeous sea, and obviously it's on the Mediterranean Sea and the Tyrrhenian Sea, kind of depending on the side. Uh, very famous is the Emerald Coast, but there are plenty of other places that may be a little less touristic and still phenomenal. The food is great, you can have a great drink, Sardinian people are incredible sports. And uh, yeah, so if there is one location you would like to visit, I would strongly suggest Sardinia because... Anyways, let me know if you liked this video. There, is, there are more studies, guys. These genetic studies are coming one after the other and it's glorious. Thank you very much for watching. I'll post more soon and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.